Let's discuss externalities. Externalities occur when producing or consuming a good cause an impact on third parties not directly related to the transaction. And there are two types of externalities. Negative externality and positive externality. Let's first discuss the latter one. From the word positive itself, positive externality occurs when producing or consuming a good costs a benefit to a third party not directly involved. Now let's discuss the example under this externality. The increased immunization in 72 of the world's poorest countries. Immunization rates have been largely increasing in the past decade, fueled by the decade of vaccines of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This growth is largely taking place in the developing world as there is growing fear of vaccines in some developed nations like the United States, due to claims that it could cause death and autism, among other side effects. Because of this, health professionals and economists alike took interest in the economic benefits that the immunizations bring. Hence, the study of the use of malaria, measles, meningitis, pertussis, pneumonia, and rotavirus vaccines in 72 low-income countries. A vaccinated individual would not only mean that this person is less likely to be infected, but also he would contribute to a concept called herd immunity. As seen on the diagram, this would ach be achieved when there is a sufficiently high number of vaccinated people that unvaccinated people would be shielded by these vaccinated people from those who are already infected, further lessening the likelihood of infection within the community. By increasing the immunization rate, the said study showed that there could be a total of 6,374,000 avoided deaths and 426,479,000 avoided cases in the six diseases. Estimated decrease in deaths and cases in the 72 countries would ultimately mean that there would be costs that would be averted. This could be the costs incurred by hospitalization, medicines, productivity loss due to falling ill, and productivity loss due to disability. As shown in the table, a total of 151 billion 15 million US dollars could be saved from treatment costs, disability losses, and productivity losses. The total costs that are avoided have taken into account the productivity lost, not only by the person who fell ill, but also the one who is taking care of the patient, amounting to a total of 1.2 billion US dollars. This shows that the benefits are not exclusive to the immunized person, and if continued, the economic benefits would be far-reaching. Let's now move on to the negative externalities. Negative externality is when producing or consuming a good causes an external cost to a third party. It causes spillover effects to any individual, resources, or even society as a whole. Negative externality arises when the social cost is greater than what is being paid for by a consumer or a producer. One of our examples for negative externality is the negative impacts of hydropower dams in the lower Mekong Basin to the fisheries and agricultural sector in Cambodia and Vietnam. The lower Mekong River Basin is part of the Mekong River that covers the boundary of Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. This river is the largest in Southeast Asia and is significant as it provides livelihood and opportunities to millions of people. This river is being used not only for agriculture and fisheries, but is also essential for irrigation, transportation, and power generation. Because of its diverse functionality, hydropower developments have been set forth over the course of years. Among the existing 64 dams in Mekong River, 46 have been built in the lower Mekong Basin, 
which could generate up to 8,650 megawatts of energy. In addition to that, 11 installations of hydropower dam among the 123 proposals is being expected to be built. However, the intention of many hydropower companies in utilizing the river basin to generate renewable energy brings threats and negative impacts to the river's rich biodiversity, costing the livelihood of at least 60 million people relying on the river's resources, particularly in Cambodia and Vietnam. Let's take a look into the most affected sectors by these hydropower plants. First is the fisheries sector in Cambodia and Vietnam. Fisheries are the primary source of income and food for the people residing around the river. In fact, Mekong River is considered as the world's biggest inland fishery, accounting for a quarter of the global freshwater catch. However, these constructions of dams threaten the sustainability of the fishery sector as dams act as physical barriers to fish migrations. Shown in the table is the breakdown of fish losses in Cambodia and Vietnam. In Cambodia, a total of 267,429 tons of fish are being lost due to the dams built in Lower Mekong Basin, while in Vietnam, a total of 366,570 tons of fish were lost. Another sector being affected by these dams is the agricultural sector in Cambodia and Vietnam. The construction of these dams causes salt water to intrude into the Mekong Delta, which results to the decrease in agricultural production. The reduction in the sediment loading also greatly affects the losses in agricultural production. Shown in the table is the decrease in the percentage of rice and maize production in Cambodia and Vietnam. The maize production in the LMB region was found to receive greater impact than in rice production, having a total of 31% decrease in both countries. Meanwhile, the reduction in the rice production in both countries only totals to 6%. In both Cambodia and Vietnam, the direct losses in gross revenue as well as GDP in fishery is higher than those in agriculture. The total direct reduction in gross revenue in Vietnam, which is 660.7 million US dollars, is much greater than in Cambodia, which is 457.1 million US dollars. However, Loss to GDP in Cambodia, which is 410.2 million US dollars, is much larger than in Vietnam, which is 224.2 million US dollars. Project developers and electricity importers in the Mekong River benefit the most from the revenues gained from the dams, but the farmers and fishermen would continue to bear the greater burden of the losses in their source of livelihood. Now let's move on to the next example. The negative externality of nickel mining in Santa Cruz, Zambales. According to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, besides gold and copper, nickel is also one of the primary mineral commodities. And this municipality, Santa Cruz, known for its best carabao mango in the world, has been a haven for nickel extraction. And this is all because of the presence of abundant agricultural land in this municipality. So, mining industries started to come. They wanted to undertake this opportunity. And they are namely, Zambales Diversified Metals Corporation, Benguet Corporation Nickel Mines Incorporation, Aramin Minerals Incorporation, LNL Archipelago Minerals. However, this continuous excavation has destructive impacts. Due to mining operations, it resulted to nickel laterite seeping in irrigated water sources. This affected mostly the agricultural and fishery sectors. And these negative impacts can be seen in this table. Each sector affected 
amounts to millions of loss in Philippine peso. The rice production amounted to 200 million pesos. Fish production in three major rivers amounted to 20 million pesos. Fish production in at least 100 hectares of fish pond amounted to 30 million pesos. And lastly, and the most effective of all, the fruits and sugar production amounted to 500 million pesos. The mining activities caused Santa Cruz to miss half a billion pesos worth of fruit, sugar, mango, and fish. For in even the development of the finest and sweetest carabao mango is drastically decreasing. This is the negative externality of nickel mining in Santa Cruz, Zambales.